All right, guys, welcome back to another video. This week, I'm going to be specifically talking about rabbit snails and why they're so cool and why you should have them. Um, I'm gonna go through different types that you get, their feeding, the water parameters and breeding as well, because breeding is always fun and you can make some money on the side, which pays for themselves. So I hope you do enjoy today's video. And if you do, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it as always. And yeah, I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, so to start off with, I just want to talk about a few different types that you can get. So here I've got, currently eating the courgette, is the gold spotted rabbit snail. It's definitely one of my favorite, and when I saw them, I had to get them. I just wish I got a few more, because it would be really cool to produce loads of those babies. Um, what else have I got? I've got the orange rabbit snail. Uh, I believe there's some yellow in there, and there is another type, but I cannot remember what it's called. The other types that you can get are, you get like chocolate ones, you get yellow spotted, white spotted, black ones, all sorts. And there's, there is so many to choose from. And the, yeah, the gold spotted, let's see if I can zoom in on him. It is such a cool snail. And there is currently, I saw it a minute ago. Uh, where is it? There it is. So I found this, I've only had the gold spotted for a week or two. I can't remember when I got them. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the babies from the gold spotted and I only noticed it was a gold spotted because it was out of the show earlier and I could literally see gold spots with a nice black background and it looked really cool. So I was well chuffed with that. Um, yeah, because when, when it comes to like breeding these, obviously they're, they're not, from what I've read, they're not, um, what's the word, asexual, I think it is. So you do have to have a male and a female, but then they're, they're not sexually dimorphic. So they do look exactly the same, which is a pain, but obviously to avoid any problems, just get more than two, get like three or four, and you're guaranteed to have one of each in most cases. Yeah, so there's different types. I'll show you the, uh, so I'm zoom in on the orange one. A really nice, vibrant orange. And then you've got the yellow one just here. And this one up at the front is also another uh, gold spotted. But I believe there are, there's probably about 10 adult, adults in here. But it's not a heavily stocked tank, it's a couple of bristle, I think there's maybe two bristle noses, a couple of female fighters, that's, that's pretty much it. They all sort of get along pretty well. All right, so let's talk about the water parameters that you, you're, you're sort of aiming for and what the ideal parameters are. So temperature wise, you want to be good between 76 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 24 to 28 Celsius, I believe. Um, so that's why they're quite ideal for most community tanks because that's generally the temperature most tropical fish are kept at anyway. Um, pH needs to be above seven. Uh, so between 7.2, 7.5, that sort of area, that's perfect. The main reason being to avoid shell corrosion, because if it's slightly acidic, it will just mess up their shells, and that's the last thing you want. Um, next thing would be lighting. That's the next one. So with the lighting, they haven't got really any special requirements. So just your normal lighting or slightly dimmer than normal, that that'd be ideal. That's what we sort of aiming for. Oh, and also for attention, you want slightly more harder water with more minerals in it so they wouldn't be ideal for obviously a lot of the fish that like i keep are plex and like l numbers high pan citrus they're not ideal for those sorts of tanks because the water that they're kept in is much softer whereas these are going to need much harder water uh, that's full of minerals full of uh, calcium things like that so that's sort of what you want to aim for is slightly harder water with snails just snails in general really to be honest all right moving on to feeding so with these guys, as you can see, he's eating a courgette and absolutely loves it. Um, I've not seen a snail do it like that before, but it, it, it works, so he's happy. Um, with these, you want to be giving him plenty of vegetable matter. Stuff with calcium in it is ideal. It's, it's great for their shell growth. Um, anything, like, obviously I feed a lot of stuff, uh, spirulina flakes and uh, vanules, and that, again, that's great for them because it's nice high vegetable protein, like uh, content not protein um 
so yeah they're not they're not particularly fussy so if you've got them in with like a community tank they will happily scavenge the bottom of the tank and just take on whatever's left really they're, they're quite happy to literally eat everything so if you're feeding flakes or wafers any literally anything they'll have a good munch on it um yeah they'll, they'll probably will actually eat quite like higher protein food as well and won't cause them any harm um but yeah plenty of courgette that's always a good way to go all right moving on to the fun bit now which is breeding so the reason the main reason they are favored among most hobbyists is because they don't overproduce snails so they're not like your um I forgot what they're called bladder snails they just produce hundreds of eggs or ramshorn snails anything like that because they're, they're just a pain in the ass uh but these guys so these produce supposedly once they get to about one and a half inches which takes generally about a year you'll be uh looking at probably so, yeah, so what so what i've been told is it's it's like one one or two babies every three weeks something like that and it is about that but i'd say it's a bit more frequent than two weeks i find it's pretty much every, every week I, I check there's at least an extra baby or two extra babies um and what they'll do is they'll produce like a little they'll hold on to the female will hold on to the egg um and the male deposits it's magic sauce and that's basically how it happens but the, yeah so the female will lay the egg eventually um and a couple of hours later after it, the egg's been laid it will then hatch out and it's pretty much a quarter of an inch in size i'd say um so it's not like it's tiny and you're not going to accidentally like, suck it up when you're doing your uh siphon and things like that it's, it's quite obvious but let's see if i can find a tiny baby down here so just to the right that's can't really see it because the silicon's in the way. But that there, that's probably about a week old. And it, they are they are very obvious to see. In fact, there's an even smaller one there. I bet I will need to zoom in. <laughs> but that's that's it, mate. That's, yeah, that's a few days old. So they are very obvious. But yeah, so ideally you want to get a decent amount of them. If you've got a specific one you're going for. Well, for me, I wish I'd got more of the gold spots because they are incredible. Um, get yourself five ten of them whatever and you'll be producing loads in no time um money wise that sort of side of it um i don't really know it all depends on where you are really i mean if you can get your hands on some nice ones that aren't common in your area then yeah you'll do, you'll do quite well locally um but the other option as well is especially if you're in like the uk uh, i don't know if these are i don't know if these are farmed in the uk or they, most of them are imported or whatnot but yeah, it's going to save uh, costs on a shop, for example, buying in stuff overseas because those costs have just gone mad. So you can always sell them to shops, but obviously you do get less money. But yeah, I mean, for me, I just find it fascinating and fun to breed. It's like a something that you can do without intentionally doing it, if that makes sense. So you can just have it going on in the background and they will breed for you, which is really cool. So it's, yeah, well worth doing. Definitely worth doing. It's always interesting. All right, so now just some interesting facts and whatnot about them. They, on average, they'll live between one and three years and maybe longer if you're lucky, which is always nice. Um, they also go by a name of like elephant snails because if you look at them, I mean, they look like elephants, which is cool. But the reason they're called rabbit snails generally is because they sort of hop along. And, and, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And strange, strange way, but they're cool. Um, yeah, obviously they will clean algae as well, which is handy. So yeah, if you haven't got any rubber snails, you should definitely get some for your community tank, provided you've got the like, correct water parameters. So obviously things like, if, if you've got like, loads of guppies in your tank or any live bearers for that, like, obviously they prefer harder water. So that's quite an ideal environment for rabbit snails. So that's definitely a way to go. Uh, yeah, they, they are just so cool. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, especially if you do like rabbit snails, then I'm sure you'd have found it amazing. Um, but yeah, so if you did enjoy, like and subscribe as normal. I really appreciate it. We're well on our way to 500 subs, and that would be great if we can get there. So, see ya whenever I make, make, make a video. I don't know. Maybe next week. Maybe not. <laughs>